My name is Alexandra Hill, and for my interview presentation, I decided to interview my youth pastor, Eric Schaefer. He's definitely the most influential leader I've had in my life. When I think of all the forms of leadership mentioned throughout the book, I tend to think of him as having the relational approach to leadership. The relational approach focuses on the relationships between a leader and their followers. Eric's always been a caring individual that's been interested in building relationships with others. According to the vertical dyad linkage theory, there are in-group followers and out-group followers. I'd like to consider myself to be an in-group follower since I have a high level of trust and support in Eric. Another type of leadership approach that I think of when I think of Eric is the paternalistic leadership approach. Paternalistic leadership is when a leader takes on the form of being a father figure, and Eric has definitely had a huge influence on me as I've grown up. I was not super close to my dad, so after my mom and my grandparents, Eric basically helped to raise me, so I definitely see him as somewhat of a father figure. Lastly, as you'll hear from the interview, Eric considers himself to practice servant leadership. Servant leadership is an aspect of transformational leadership. Servant leadership is described in the book as when leaders act as servants to their followers. They provide the necessary resources and encouragement to help followers. He's also incredibly passionate about his job. Passion is another trait of a transformational leader. They have a large amount of affection for people with whom they work and the passion tends to motivate their followers. I asked Eric a variety of questions about his approach to leadership. They range from his past leadership experiences, how he thinks he acquired his leadership skills, and ended with his opinion on how to be an effective leader. I started by asking him what qualities he believed to be natural and what qualities he learned. So he said that from a young age, he always knew he had some leadership qualities, but they mainly came out during sporting events and while he was playing on teams. Uh, the qualities that he believed to be natural to him were he was always good at getting people to work together, he's good at encouraging people to come up with a plan for the team and encourage teamwork. Uh, I asked him when he decided to take on his first leadership role, what it was and why he decided to take over. He said that in elementary school he was voted to be the team captain for his school basketball and football teams. So he was voted in by the team, he didn't campaign, just they wanted him to lead. So he enjoyed the role because it gave him permission to be vocal and to motivate others when they were losing. I asked him if there were people from his past that helped to shape his approach to leadership and who they were and why he liked their style. And he said the person that influenced him the most was someone named Mr. Benjamin. He was apparently his principal at the elementary school and his sports coach. And he believed that he had great teaching fundamentals by inspiring kids being tough when necessary, and always putting the team before the individual. All of those things are important to Eric, and he incorporated those into his own leadership style. Things that past leaders of his did that he didn't like was that some coaches would try to embarrass kids when they would mess up, and he's realized that shaming doesn't actually help. It just demoralizes everyone by singling out the one person that's struggling. I wanted to know how he himself would describe his leadership, and the three words that he chose were compassion, servant, and leader, which goes back to how he himself considers himself to be a servant leader. Uh, then I asked what he would change about his leadership style, and he said that he wishes he was more strict at times and more organized, because being unorganized can make it difficult for others to follow directions or to be motivated at times. And then I want to know what he's tried in the past as far as leadership and what didn't work. He says that yelling, being pushy, not communicating the goal, being unorganized and not planning thoroughly can all be detrimental when you try to lead others. The biggest challenge that he has had as a leader is trying to communicate his goal to the group and getting everyone to agree on it. Then I wanted to know what tips he would give on how to be a good leader. And the tips that he gave me were to don't ask anyone to do something you yourself wouldn't be willing to do. Be loyal. Encouraging words help more than negative statements. Don't take yourself too seriously. Know the people you're working with and realize they each have different ways that they're motivated. Be flexible. Be willing to admit when you're wrong. Forgive people if they mess up and ask for forgiveness when you yourself mess up. Listen. Be humble. People around you have more different talents than you do, so use them. Be willing to change the goal of the group if things don't work. Pray, give compliments, be honorable, and serve those around you. Don't speak down to others. The last thing I want to know if there's anything I hadn't asked him about leadership that he thought that I should know. 
and how to be a good leader based on those things. The things that he told me were, you can be a leader to a large group or just to one person. There is no right way to be a leader. You have to do it in the way that you feel most comfortable. You are a leader even if you don't feel like it. You have the rights and the gift to be a leader. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He helped serve lepers and outsiders, and he's the most famous leader to have ever walked the earth. Love yourself and love others, especially those who have no voice in society. That makes you an honorable leader. So after interviewing Eric and considering the different forms of leadership presented in the book, I realized that he's more than one type of leader. I believe, like I mentioned previously, that he is a relational approach, a paternalistic approach, and a transformational approach, specifically the servant leadership style. I think this is why he's such a great leader. It's because he's found a way to take certain points from different styles and configure them into a way that's the most efficient for him as a leader.